All right, EXPs, how are you guys doing tonight? Now that we have all the kinks worked out, I'm just adjusting my camera, making sure I get this lighting right before we get started. Welcome to the EXP Elite Group. We are back with pop-up interviews tonight. Yay! Thank all of you guys for tuning in, for joining me tonight. We just did a quick test on my personal page with Gabrielle Sanjali. So we ready to get this thing cracking to talk all things experiential marketing, talk about her journey from educator to now full-time EXP, and how she's been able to progress within the experiential marketing industry. So I just want to um, not only thank you guys for tuning in, but also encourage you to go ahead and share this video with all your friends, um, anybody that you know looking to begin a career or actually still or currently executing events as an EXP, go ahead and encourage them to watch this video and um, listen to the nuggets that Gabby has to share. Last week, I had the uh, liberty of actually surprising her. I don't know if you guys checked out that video yet, but I surprised her at work and presented her with her EXP Rookie of the Year Award. So she won that. And um, we actually did the pop-up interview there, but... I made a mistake and actually deleted the pop-up interview while I was here trying to sit on all the different platforms. I made the mistake and deleted the so my I fall on, on um, my end. I know a lot of you probably saw the video and you were like, what happened? Where did it go? Like, why, why did it disappear? So that was my doing and I apologize. But hey, I just want to thank Gabby. Shouts out to her for being understanding and for working with me and for her willingness to go ahead and conduct this interview again because she provided some great insight. Gabby, are you there? I see your video. There you go. She provided some uh, great insight that I feel like all of you, all of us as EXPs need to hear. So while she turns her camera around, <laughs> And she gets uh, which way is it? I can't, ready I can't for see tonight. her. Me. Is it the right you're, way you're or is it the wrong way? So go back the other way. Wrong way. Flip it. Like, like this? There we go. Right there. And exactly the opposite of what we were just doing. It was not that way. <laughs> there we go. Bam. <laughs> yes. All right. So she. She's back. We are here. And I was just telling them about what I did and how I made a mistake last week and deleted the video. So um, now we're here doing a true pop-up interview. Well, a video pop-up interview for everyone. So either way, the information is important, is valuable for EXPs to hear. So I wanted them to um, hear your story, for you to share your experiences and to be able to ask any questions that they had. So, without further ado, um, first off, last week I surprised you at your job. Are you? Still, how do you feel about that? For, for me doing that, um, it was awesome. I did a lot. Uh, I didn't expect it at all because I was looking at my boss, you know, Matt. Um, I was like, he was playing the music all loud. I thought he was getting the people in the store hype because we, we had actual people in there looking at. So I was like, why is this song this loud? It's not that serious. <laughs> and I loved it. It was great. Okay. You got like a little bit of feedback. I think your connection's a little, it's just going in and out. Okay. Hold on one second. Okay. Give us a minute, guys. Bear with us. We're just working through a few kinks. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to clean that off. All right, I'm in the kitchen because it has the best lighting, so is that okay. better? Yes, much better. Okay, great. Oh, cool. All right, so let's jump right into it. Tell EXPs who may not have worked with you because you are Atlanta-based, um, who is mm -hmm. Gabrielle Sanjali and a little bit about your background as an EXP. So I started uh, doing experiential marketing uh, probably like hardcore about a year and a half ago or so. Uh, one of my friends was doing it. Uh, we went to high school together and um, I noticed she was going all these different places. She was like going on tour, which I didn't know what that meant. 
Um, and I saw she was, you know, going all these places that's cool. I just thought it was part of her job. I didn't think anything of it. But then one day she asked me, hey, um, I need somebody. I'm staffing coordinator for this, this job. Would you like to do it with me? I was like, sure. You know, I was substitute teaching at the time. And a substitute teaching is like what we do, independent contract work. So it's independent of the day. So I was like, yeah, I can just take off whenever and I'll do it with you. And it was super fun. I met all these really cool people who I'm actually still friends with today um, through the BA world. And I see them at all these events. And it's cool that their kindness brought me into the industry and like the, all the excitement and the, the hype that goes along with it, making other people excited, even consumers, um, made me just love what we're doing. Mm. So talk about your transition from educator to now full time. And you still, because the other night we had a scheduled pop up, but you were tutoring a, a student. So just talk about your transition from moving in that mentality from moving to an educator full time to now uh, EXP and using that your main full time as now a part time. How has that been transitioning? So transitioning for me from substitute teacher to EXP has been pretty seamless, I would say. Um, I, tra I decided to change what I was doing because I'm not the biggest fan of what the school systems are doing, to be honest. And, oh, hey, roommate. Hey. <laughs> and um, I mean, I like it. It's just it, it was all over the place. And I decided to switch to this because this is all over the place, but it's a fun all over the place. Substitute teaching, I was doing that, um, I would say, five times a week, doing different schools, different subjects, different personalities. And this one, as ESP, is really similar. It's just there's cool brands. You know, you get free swag. You make people happy. And, you know, when you're teaching math, which was when my expertise was, um, people just, kids didn't like the math. They didn't want to do it. So. And last that's week, why when I switched over. And last week we that? talked about like dealing with students and just having to be a counselor as well. So talk a little bit about that. Yes. yes, as you are a teacher, you're not only just go in the classroom and then you teach and you leave. It's, it's not that simple. Sometimes you're, you're acting as these kids' parents. Sometimes some of the children, they don't have a lot to eat. Sometimes, you know, there's bullies there. You have to, you know, exchange that. I mean, I've been at a school when there was a gun went off in the school. So it's like, how do you handle um, seventh graders for three hours on lockdown when a gun went off? How do you do that? So if I could handle that, it's like herding cats and all these personalities. I feel like being an EXP is the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> and along with that, being a teacher and then you just having the outgoing and the engaging personality that you have because when i work with you with aws i mean you would dance and you would just the life of the party you know and it's always great to work with bas who exude such an outgoing personality but you also talked about having a background in cosplay so you explained to me mm -hmm. this week what that was and how that kind of translates into you being an exp and having such a great personality. Can you explain, you know, what cosplay is and why you feel like it's a great transition, you know, working in the experiential market industry? Yes. So I love cosplay. So cosplay, for those of you who don't know, it translates to uh, costume play uh, originating in Japan. So it's pretty much like I can say as simply as uh, Halloween on steroids for certain conventions. You can dress up as any character you want. It started in anime, but for me, it's more about pop culture, uh, comic book characters, things like that. It's a lot of fun. And it started because I love Halloween. That's where I was just like, I made my first costume. I think I was, uh, I made a Pikachu costume when I was in college. And I was like, I don't want to spend $70 on this really terrible Halloween costume. So I went and made mine. And that's where it started. And I feel like cosplay is the way to express myself. Because in high school, I was in drama. So that was another way I did marching band. So I liked performing. So in a sense, costume play or cosplay is similar to performing, but you can be whoever you want to be. And I like it because there's like no race necessarily, you know, gender, you can do whatever you want. I cosplay a lot of male characters a lot of times. Mm -hmm. um, I cosplayed most recently at Dragon Con, uh, Captain Planet, 
from the 90s. I don't know if you guys remember that cartoon where, he's, yes. <laughs> where he saves the planet. Yeah, so I painted my whole self blue. So I think that translates to EXP. It's because I am performing. I am putting on the character of that brand. So for AWS, even though I'm having a great time in my life, I would do that anyway. It's just like, oh, wait, maybe AWS or Amazon Web Services is the way to go. And that's what my company wants to use. Mm -hmm. So your transition, you, you had your friend. She told you about opportunities she needed staff for. You worked the event. You really enjoyed it. From there, what was kind of like your – how did you learn about obtaining more opportunities and how to ensure that you, you know, were able to transition to an EXP full time. Like, what, after that job, what other jobs did you start applying for and obtaining afterwards? Uh, so, I would say um, my like aha moment was when um, I was working at Joanne. So, you know, I'm a cosplayer. So, Joanne Craft and Fabrics, they sell all types of things. And I was working there and I was realizing, you know, if I want to do this EXP thing, I cannot work the weekends like I was working at Joanne's. So I love, I learned a lot there. So I take from every single job, I learn a lot. Um, but I realized, hey, all the EXP work is on the weekends. So with good faith, I went and got some of my headshots done, which my first headshots, I'll be honest, were with a Galaxy Note uh, 4. They're just with a cell phone. We had good lighting. Um, we were like in a kitchen on um, my friend's house and we just I researched uh, what colors look good on me and what colors look good on her. And we just took a ton of pictures. And then we went and ate Mexican food. And as soon as I quit the Joanne job and I put those headshots up and I just started applying for things and I always put, played up my strengths. So some people were like, oh, being a geek is weird. I tell everybody that I like Star Wars, just letting you know. <laughs> and I tell a lot of people I've worked with kids. I've done summer camp. And, you know, if you could work with children and manage 20, 30 kids in the classroom, Managing ESPs can be difficult, but I feel like it's a different energy, and it's just, for me, it's easier. So I just started applying, applying, um, and I have a biology degree, so my another aha moment for me was uh, I worked for an event for NASA, and I had to wear a uh, um, lab coat on. Mm -hmm. And this lady comes up to me, and the movie Hidden Figures had just come out. Yeah. And Hidden Figures is about the NASA computers that um, they were put in the basement, and no one really gave them credit. Um, they were African-American. And this lady came up to me, she was African-American, she was like, hey, Hidden Figures, how are you doing? I'm so proud of you and all this stuff. And that meant a lot to me because she, she took a picture with me instead of our astronaut that we had sitting over there. So mm -hmm. that was one of the things, like, I want to do this all the time because it's like I'm a face of this person. This person believed that I was with NASA. And um, I thought that was awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and back to your headshot, um, if you guys haven't noticed mm -hmm. already, on her um, EXP uh, Rookie of the Year uh, picture that I posted in the green, that is the picture that Gabby actually took with her Note 4. Yay, she has her award there. So <laughs> professional headshots are recommended, but if you have a great phone, great lighting, and like Gabby said, you are able to research the best colors for your skin tone, then you can create a headshot which would land you opportunities. So Back to that, you created the headshot, you had your resume, mm -hmm. explain to EXPs, because it is a hustle. You just didn't, okay, I'm, I applied, I, I applied for the job, I presented my headshot resume, now I should automatically get opportunities. Talk about like that hustle and grind to get to where you are now, because we're going to jump into this team lead management stuff next. So talk about that a little bit. Um, I would say apply to everything that you are qualified for and networking. Networking. I mean, I've met people one time on a job, and it was a job that nothing was happening. We were standing around for literally four hours, and that happens in the EXP. Not everything's exciting. And she ended up, um, she's an account manager for a another uh, a brand, and she hired me as her one of her, um, her little minions or EXPs. Mm -hmm. So you never know who you're going to run into, even if the job is blah. And, you know, networking has helped me a lot. But then again, you know, I'm very friendly. And in, as an EXP, you need to be very friendly. Um, it helps, you know, keep your relationships open, be cool with people. And there's people you're not going to like, of course, but just be kind to them. And that's part of, that's part of my hustle is just, you know, being cool with everybody. And you can't be, love everybody, but be nice. Mm -hmm. I think that's the simplest way. Yeah, be nice and make sure that you are representing yourself accordingly. Because 
you can network right. with people, but if you're on a job and you're unprofessional, you're late, you don't have the proper attire, nobody's going to recommend you for future opportunities. So you just have to make sure that you are always at all times a brand within a brand. So yep. I preach that a lot and we've been talking about that. So transition to now you are also serve as a team lead product specialist and a um, manager. You most recently managed for Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. What was that? I'm going to let you tell it. <laughs> uh, for Super Bowl, it was for the Genesis and the Genesis was the lu official luxury car of the NFL. So um, as you guys know, like um, it's, it's a luxury division of Hyundai. And so um, Hyundai was a huge sponsor of the NFL. If you guys went to the Super Bowl experience, mm -hmm. um, Super Bowl Live, like we were all there. So we had like four different activations. And so I managed the one we had at Phipps Plaza. It was a ride and drive. So we couldn't do, you know, a ride and drive down near Super Bowl exactly. But um, we were there where all the uh, celebrities were actually, there was a lot of celebrity parties happening and it was awesome. <laughs> So talk about that transition from starting as a brand ambassador, working also team lead positions to now being a um, manager for programs. How has that transition been for you and what have you learned along the way? So for me, the transition was pretty easy. But when I said keep those relationships open, it's one company that I've worked for consistently. And then one day they said, hey, um, you have really good ratings on our on our portal, our staff portal. So, would you like to be mm -hmm. uh, as a client mm -hmm. assistant? I said, sure, I'll be a client assistant. That's cool. Um, I did a great job, and now every single time they have been offering me team lead, and then I could put that on my resume. So then other people would see like the Genesis job. That was the first time I've ever worked with that company. But they asked me to be team lead, and I think it helped me with other other activations seeing that I was team lead to hire me for that one and being a teacher too because that is management in a sense even though they're you're dealing with children mm -hmm. um but I have a lot of fun with it even I just got asked to be team lead for an event I'm doing in Seattle in two weeks so that just happened today so I'm really excited about it so how has it been because you had to work um with different EXPs and in a management role and, and train them prior to the event and making sure that they were equipped and we talked about this, you know, having, I think you said a girl with blue hair showed up. So just talk about like having to work with different personalities and rejection from EXPs and being able to manage, you know, an event mm -hmm. from that perspective. Uh, so, for, uh, so for me, I enjoy when people hey, say, hey, are you okay? Just simple as simple, something like that. I had a, somebody had a um, anxiety attack. And if I did not ask her, excuse me, hello. Oh no, I'm still okay. here. <laughs> okay. um, it's just my, I'm holding my phone because our other thing didn't work. But anyways. Um, oh, flip it around. So I had somebody like, oh, Again. that way? Yep. Okay. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> but hey, this is what happens. Like yeah. ESP, you never know something's going to happen. You know, you have to just take care of it. Yeah. Um, so I had a, um, somebody who had an anxiety attack. And I think I just saw her just freaking out. And I came up to her and said, are you okay? She was not okay. So I had to, you know, you have to deal with that accordingly. Like, you don't want to make people feel like they're less than because they have that issue. They're sick or whatever. Um, but then on the flip side of that, you said people, like, someone came with blue hair. And I had to let them go. I, you know, came up to them and I said, hey, it's in the directions. I reminded them of that carefully. And I said, um, this is a luxury brand. And it was for Genesis. You cannot... Mm -hmm. have blue hair I just flat out told her but I was nice about it and I said oh you have opportunity to you know change your hair out if she if she had something else like if she had a wig she could put it on I gave her that opportunity to fix it before I just cut her um but she decided that she'd rather just go home um and this happened before but most of the time I haven't really had any issues as long as you treat people the way they want to be treated give them bathroom breaks um you know, take their spot when they go on a break so you don't have that, like, a hole in the spot. I mean, it's it's pretty simple for me. Mm -hmm. So have you had instances where you've had different personalities that you've had to manage and people with attitudes or not unwillingness to work as a team, like a team player? Have you had to deal with that? Not necessarily a team player. I think I've been pretty seamless with that. I think my only issue, I had somebody, they really wanted to go on break, but she miscommunicated with me that, she said she was done with the role she was doing versus she was done with the job. So she kept like, she yelled at me and was like, Hey, I'm done with this. And I thought she meant she was done with working with us, but it was, she was done with doing what we were, um, 
I guess her role, because we were out in the cold and it was wet, it was raining. So I understood where she was coming from. So I didn't make a big like stink about it because I was like, I know we were stressed, we were cold, it's wet out here. Um, but yeah, I just handle it and she was cool. And I said, oh, I misunderstood you. And then I, you know, switched her out with some people and it was fine. Okay. You just listen to people. Yeah, listen and um, communicate effectively. Because a lot of times what you say and what people hear may be two different things. So make sure you always communicate any concerns that you have is important. So typical day in the life of Gabby as an EXP, do you wake up in the morning, apply for jobs first? Like what is some, some things that you do on a daily basis? Hmm, on a daily basis, I would say I, I have a, um, and what, and what an days do you generally work the most? Like what days are your slow days, your busy days? Oh, so my busy days, I would say definitely Thursday through Sunday, um, especially now with, with festival season coming up, um, the car shows, things like that. So I'm definitely busy with those. But it just depends on where you go. If you travel, you can um, do conferences that are Monday through Thursday. And that's what I'm doing in Seattle as a conference. So that's going to help. Um, but I would say in the morning, uh, depending on the job, you know, I'll just, I'll just get up, do my things. I do my paperwork at night. I'm not a big morning person like I'm hardcore in the morning and then at night I'm just more chill so what I would do is go onto my um, excel sheet so I have all my jobs listed on my excel sheet that I do so I do this for tax purposes and I write you know what time I worked how much the pay was how did I get paid so I always write those down because if I don't write it down I'm gonna forget yeah and that's not good for the IRS if you know what I mean <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's what, that's what I do. Make sure your skin's clean. You're drinking a lot of water. So we have to do these events where you saw me dancing all the time or, you know, being really smiley. So just take care of your body too. That's always important. And you talked about you traveling to Seattle. Um, do mm -hmm. you travel often as a um, team lead brand ambassador and why, or how has that helped you progress in the industry? So I started traveling more recently, mm -hmm. um, just because... Oh, no, what was that? That's my phone. <laughs> Just because I I like to travel. I'm a military brat, and uh, traveling is in my heart anyway. I just wanted to find more ways as an EXP to travel and then, you know, work and travel. So the reason I did this Seattle job is because I've never been to Seattle. So it came up, and I'm like, I'm going to go. Let's do it. So my rule of thumb is if you're trying to make money, at least, is try to look at it. It's three times as much as you're going to spend. Mm -hmm. So if you're – um your hotel costs you three hundred dollars, but you're only making seven hundred dollars at the at the event. It might not be worth it, but then it really depends on what you're going for. If you're going to straight make money, that's not worth it. But if you're going to visit friends, you want to see a new location. I think it's worth it. So I did that with Vegas at AWS for Amazon Web Services in Vegas, and uh, me and a friend we actually went and saw uh, the Grand Canyon for the first time. And I think it helped that I had a job down there too. So we went a few days early and went. And did that and it was great <laughs> <laughs> and talk a little bit about aws because you served as a team lead there as well how many exps mm -hmm. did you manage for that event so that one as a whole team i think we had almost on our floor because we had it into floor so first second and third floor um i think my team was about 15 20 but the floors we had about 70 all together mm -hmm. so um we were always helping each other because of course i was floor two but you know i would help my other team leads with the other floors like we would switch around so we're not you know in the same place all the time super bored we would need to switch our our um our exps around too because sometimes they just you know need a change of scenery and it's hustle bustle and things like that yeah so what what is one takeaway that you learned from that because you managed from genesis with like five to seven people to a bigger event with more people what was something you learned of managing that program um, you have to just be more aware. That's pretty much it. It's just the same. It's um, on a bigger scale. And it also depends on the event because five or seven people, if it's a really busy event, can be the same as if there's 70 people and you're just doing registration. You know, it really, it really depends. You have to, you know, you have to tinker with it, see how it is. And for EXPs who are just beginning in the industry who may feel like, you know, I'm, I'm starting out. Um, it's hard for me to obtain consistent opportunities. Um, what is some advice that you would give them? Some tools that you have been able to implement over the years? I would say, of course, get your head socked. 
definitely follow instructions. I know it sounds really basic, but you know, like having the right shoes is important. There's always someone, we have a job where we're standing for 14 hours and someone brings heels every time and then they complain. So make sure you just, you know, practicality, use common sense. And I know common sense is not so common, um, but make sure you use that. And uh, like to network, get on all the, the Facebook groups is what helped me. Um, apply to things, even though you're like, I'm not sure about this, just apply. There's been jobs where I apply and I forgot about it. And then they're like, hey, we need you for this. And I was like, oh, great. And if I think I, if I didn't apply to it, I would have never even been in their system. They wouldn't have saw my face. They've ha I've had people text me even after that event was over and they're like, oh, we have your profile saved from this event. Would you like to try this one? Mm. So those are my, my little tidbits. And how about for... Um keys to success for anyone looking to progress. So you started as a brand ambassador, now you've progressed as a team lead and manager. What are your keys to success um, for individuals who have been executing events for a while and want to progress? What, what are some things that you have implemented over the years? Is it updating your resume? Is it um, mm -hmm. building a great rapport with the staffing company? Like what are some things, you know, that you have been able to implement you know in the year that you've been doing it full time that you feel like has helped you jump from brand ambassador to now team lead and manager mm -hmm. i would definitely say um keep a good relationship with your staffing companies and update resume like you said um that's that's exactly what i would do um i so started my social media so it's just an instagram page but that helps me keep track of all the brands that i've worked on so then when they ask oh can you send you know 10 photos of you at events or something i can give them my link and they can click on it it's public so only i have my work stuff on there so they can see the types of event i've, I've done um i've also had a um agency say oh i see you have a diversification of of your resume i was like you've done you know cars and food and all those things so i would say try to do different aspects but if you really want to do cars you know, focus on the cars and make sure you're looking at all avenues of the cars. If you're looking on Indeed, if you're looking on Craigslist, if you're looking on um, Facebook for jobs, just make sure you're always looking and just ask people kindly, of course, but only after they have seen your work ethic. Because yeah. I've had people throw stuff at me. Oh, can you put me on this? And I'm like, I don't even know how you are as a worker. I'm not going to recommend you unless I've worked with you before. Um, your, so yeah, I just want to make sure. <laughs> your name, your name carries weight. It could be good yes. or bad. So you got to be mindful of that. And speaking of, what are some things that you've seen from other EXPs that you want to kind of help EXPs shy away from doing? Like some don'ts of you know becoming a great EXP. Um, don't show up to work drunk. I know that sounds crazy, but it's happened. And I was furious. <laughs> like, I'm not a person that gets furious very often, but I was like, how dare you? Like, how dare you? Um, <laughs> so just don't do that. Um, but like I said, always put on your, your best, your best smile. Um, come to work with clean clothes or at least iron clothes. Like, come on. It's just, it's just the basics. Like the most basic thing they taught in school, like a dress code, <laughs> follow the dress code. Oh, well, they're not going to say anything to me. Well, it's not about you necessarily or your style. It's just the brand and what they want. So, you know, just be mindful of that. Mm -hmm. And what has being an EXP afforded you opportunities that you didn't have before? Like what working, what has working in this industry um, allowed you to do that you didn't have before with your nine to five as a full time educator? I would say definitely travel and meeting new people. Um, at the school, I still met a lot of kids. I just didn't get to meet a lot of teachers. So I was around, you know, because you're around the same, you know, 40 kids all day. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so at, at EXP, you meet all these different people, which is awesome. And then I get to see the ins and outs of conventions. And that's just not something, not that I ever wanted to do. But now that I'm doing it, I'm like, this is really cool, like event planning and how things run. Um, it's just really interesting to me. It's a different side because my... My degree was in biology, so I knew how the body works, but now it's like the body of advertising. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so I just think it's right and how social media has impacted our industry because everybody wants a hashtag. Everybody wants, 
you to be able to take a picture of something really cool, whether it's a mascot, a footprint, whatever, and post it to social media. So you have all these little webs of your image of your brand everywhere. And I think that's just really interesting. It's really cool. Yeah. And just like the production of an event, like what goes into one activation for four to, to eight to nine hours, like people mm -hmm. don't understand that. And until you work on this side yeah. of the industry, it really opens you up to, you know, a different perspective. You know, people, consumers see the glitz and the glam and coming to the event and getting this free swag. But as an EXP, it's a lot that goes into one event. So, yes. Mm -hmm. So that's that's important, too. Um, where do you hope to go? So brand ambassador, you conquered that team lead. Uh, manager, what's what's next for Gabby? Where what are you looking to do uh, as the EXP? So my next thing I would like to do would be um, event management, and then definitely for sure I would love to go on tour. Not sure what kind of tour there is or available. Um, if it's going to be like a six month thing, three month, I'm fine with three weeks. <laughs> I would definitely like to do that. So anyone watching, all leads you can bring them to me. Um, anything. I mean, <laughs> I like to travel. Um, I saw an event for, for a Star Wars event that I'm actually going to. They're hiring up there for that. And now I'm thinking, I'm like, I could have worked this Star Wars event instead of going to it. But, you know, that's how it happens. Sometimes you have to pick and choose. So that's why I like the excitement about being AXP. I can just choose. It's like, what's going to come up next? I don't know. Hmm. Oh, oh gosh. So, <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm ready to, to go on wheels, to go on the road, military kid, um, you know, Girl Scout, I did all that. So I am all about trying to go on any kind of tour. And are you open to working with any brands? Because, you know, some people don't do tobacco or don't do alcohol. Are you open to everything or are you um, have your pick and choose with the type of products and brands that you represent? That's a good question. I would say I could. I don't think I could do tobacco. I'm OK with alcohol, everything else like that. But I tobacco is a little... Uh, there's been some effects in my family, so I'd rather not do that one. Um, but mostly everything else, I'm pretty pretty open to. All right, I'm just throwing it out there in case uh, yeah, it's a good question. Just mm -hmm. watch it, and they might have an opportunity. You know, they can at least know what or what opportunities to filter to you and reach out to you regarding. So I always just like to throw those questions out there um, and give you the platform to talk about you and to mm -hmm. you know ex talk about your experiences. So. Two more questions. First question, mm -hmm. um, what do you like to do in your spare time? What are your hobbies outside of working as an EXP? Uh, so my hobbies is one, um, cosplay is what I talked about earlier. So costume play, that's fun. I go to Dragon Con here in Atlanta every year and Dragon Con has like 90,000 people that go to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of my BA friends actually met him on the job. Um, I posted that, hey, I'm at Dragon Con. He's like, I'm gonna come. And I was like, what? Okay. So <laughs> he, he ended up coming with me and we ended up going to a rave at like three in the morning. So I met him like through a BA job and now we're pretty cool. And he's like, I'm going to come to Dragon Con every year. So that's one thing I like to do. I like to read. Um, I tried it when I was a teacher, you know, because sometimes substituting, you're, you're sitting down chilling for like hours. Sometimes it depends if you do high school, they give you them a worksheet and you just <laughs> do nothing. Um, and so I would read books and um, my love of reading, I read like the Harry Potter books, like the last book I read in one day when I was in college. So I'm, I'm avid for that. Um, then I would say I play saxophone. Oh, yeah. So I haven't played it in a minute because I can't be blasting my saxophone when I live with people, you know. <laughs> so um, I've been playing my saxophone since I was seven. Uh, so I enjoy that. And then I would say typically just arts and crafts. So I know cosplay is under that umbrella. Um, and I enjoy movies a lot. Mm. I love going to see a movie and I see my fellow EXPs in a movie, especially <laughs> on Netflix movies, because a lot of us, you always say, well, how do you, how do you do EXP, EXP full time? A lot of my EXP friends are actors. So they do an mm -hmm. acting job, you know, for a week or two, a day or two. And then, um, you know, they'll do EXP work and I'll see them. And I'm like, hey, I know you. I saw you in this movie. <laughs> and that's really fun. Yeah, because I saw you with the premiere of What Men Want with Taraji. So mm -hmm. you're always out and about uh, at the different movie premieres, which is pretty cool. So right. it's cool when you can take your job that you do and enjoy it in a hobby form as well. So right. that's always awesome. So last question. 
one, mm -hmm. well, let's just say three pieces of advice you would give to an EXP. Um, go ahead. Three pieces? Um, three tips. I would just say be, be you because that connection with somebody, like I said, I like Star Wars, so that connection with somebody can land you a job, you never know. Um, follow instructions and have fun. That's good. That's good. Be you, follow instructions, and have fun. So I'm glad we got to do this again. Thank you to everybody for tuning in. Special shouts out to Gabby for bearing with me last week. I'm going to hit that save button after I hit finish. <laughs> so we don't have this issue again. But um, shouts out to everybody for tuning in. Make sure you like this video, share this video. There's that EXP award again. And um, listen, take a minute and listen to the information that Gabby provided because it's very um, informative. And not only that, it's coming from an EXP who is still in the field, still active, executing events daily. Didn't you work today or yesterday? What did you work yesterday? Um, yesterday, I was working um, my Kia job. But the weekend, I worked at the North American, um, North Atlanta, excuse me, home show. Yeah. I was with the, one of the carpet companies there. Okay, and are fun. you working this weekend? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This weekend, I'm working at Kia, yeah. Okay. All right, so check her out. She'll be at Kia in the Mall of Georgia if you guys are here in the Atlanta area. So thank you to everybody for tuning in. Special thanks to Gabby again for joining me on this pop-up interview. And enjoy the rest of your night, everybody. Bye, Gabby. <laughs>